Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, it's been a while, but I guess that's kind of, that's, you know, the pattern for the channel at this point. Um, I got a little bit of extra gumption today, and I figured I'd try to get the work done I need to get done and uh, shoot a video. So, um, yeah, so here we are, back in the garage, and uh, um, new hat, but uh, don't worry, I, I have, I'm not changing allegiances entirely i just i got to visit the um i got to visit seattle recently job hunt and uh and i went by their the new team store i'm a big hockey fan you know it's a motorcycle channel but i'm a big hockey fan and so i couldn't resist getting gear up from the new team before it even starts so that was kind of cool so I'm wearing my new hat today um when last i left off the bike needs uh continues to need a brake job um, this has been a like eight month thing where there's something has gone wrong on the master cylinder. Uh, I, I'm sure there's just been guck. I did a brake job after the brake job. It all went to crap. Uh, not it didn't go to crap. But basically, it doesn't hold pressure for more than three days. And of course, that's an indication that uh, that's a bad sign. Right. So like I could I would bleed the brakes and then I could go for a ride or two. And then like three, four days later, they were too mushy to stop the bike. Um, and my course fear is that we're going to be on a ride and squeeze and have nothing there. I mean, obviously the back brakes can catch you, but if you're in a, you know, too quick of a corner or something, that could be pretty disastrous. And it's a pain in the ass to constantly bleed, bleed the brakes. You know, I've gone through gallons, not really, but feels like gallons of uh, brake fluid. So I'm getting kind of tired of it. So that alone is reason to, to do the job. Um, yeah, so it's time to, time to replace them. I actually attempted this back in the summer. I even filmed it and the replacement master cylinder I got, uh, like it basically exploded. Um, here's the new one. I got it from Gotham Cycles. It's new old stock. So it's, this one's fresh. The one I was, I had tried before was, uh, uh, it, it was used. This one is not, but there's a diaphragm in there, kind of a rubber thing. That thing exploded, and then the guts of it all popped out. It just was not good, and it didn't fix the problem. Um, if anything, I couldn't get it to bleed. That used thing, it was a takeoff. It, it was kind of a dumb idea if you think about it, a used master cylinder, but I was a little ca short on cash. Um, yeah, still short on cash, but I was able to finagle this. Um, yeah, so I got a new master cylinder. We're going to put that on. The other thing, if you remember, is the nose section had that brake. And I'm sorry to say that it didn't come out perfect, and we're just going to end up with a battle scar. I used some of the plastic bonder that I've used on other sections. Um, this portion of the, the lip prior has also been cracked. Um, and let's see, it's that side. Uh, here, I'll just pick it up. So, you know, it, from a distance it doesn't look so bad, but you can, I'm sure you can see it in the film there. There, it's starting to pop up in the camera. We got a crack. A review, if you didn't watch that video, basically I got exasperated when, I think it was, a, it was with this brake failure thing, and I went to like kind of slam my hands down and it caught the edge of it. It snapped the windscreen and uh, it snapped this piece off. Uh, it's pretty solid now. I have, uh, I've put this, it's, it's this kind of plastic bond stuff. It's, it's kind of like Bondo, but for plastic, it, it, it's really solid. Uh, it doesn't look great, but at least the, the thing is in one piece. And I know I have that spare Chinese one, but I, I, I once again pulled it out, tried fitting, and I saw again how hideous it is. And just to give you an idea, it's so... It's like 5% off, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's so just a little misshapen. misshapen. It looks, it makes the bike look swollen and stupid. I'd rather have this scratch on there than deal with that. The other thing with this is, I mean, besides this is an OEM piece, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure. Um, the other thing with this is, is I can, um, I can work on this. I have a paint pen and I have all the touch up stuff. And so over time I can do with this, cause you can see I've done a repair here. Um, where there was a really nasty crack from a previous owner and 
Yeah, I mean, it shows up a little, a bit there, but when the when it's on the bike from a distance, you can't tell. Someday, hey, maybe I will get all new plastics from the, the bike. Um, even though I'm still kind of in a financially shit position, I have a working motorcycle here. I really love my bike, um, so I don't plan on selling it tomorrow um, unless the finances get really shitty. But um, yeah, so for now, it's just gonna have that little scratch on it. It's gonna have a beauty mark and uh, someday maybe I'll take it into a paint shop and get the whole thing painted or get new plastics um, if I can get this to be prepped better and then get a, a whole new paint job on the thing that would be ideal the tank really needs a paint job I've tried with the touch-up pin and and I've cleaned it up I've improved it but it's still you know it's you know it's got character it's an old motorcycle and like I've always said I'm not going for a museum piece here oil dripping on it bugs on it that's a motorcycle that's been ridden scratches is just more the sign of the same um someday the next owner may see hey 916 it needs to be perfect and beautiful and we're gonna put it in the show i don't know maybe maybe you know 9, 916s are they do have that you know uh the history behind them so maybe there'll be someone interested enough in it uh but for me, it's, it's never going to be a showpiece. It's going to be a motorcycle I ride and I love and I take care of. So uh, to hell with that. I'll put this, I'll leave the scratch on there and let it go. I also did, did get a new windscreen. Um, so um, I got a new windscreen. And just to be sure, I also have a new um, brake uh, master cylinder reser reservoir for the brakes. So that's my plan for today. Um, probably a quick video, and uh, but you know at least an update, and I can show you all my live. So uh, all right, well I'm gonna get to work. Okay, so the first thing that needs to happen is this needs to come off. In order for that to come off, I'm gonna drain all the fluid out of the old reservoir. Um, try to get some of the I don't know, probably leave the fluid in here. If there's a banjo bolt here that comes off. And then the whole thing comes off pretty easy. Um, got a little bit of gunk in there. Anyway, this will come off, and then we will get the the new one on. And then I got to do a major re like I got to refill it all. So it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to get the the fluid back in there. And to get that fluid out of there, I'm just gonna use the uh, uh, the pump I've got. Just gonna use it, vacuum it out, and then drain it, and then remove it. All right. Okay, that uh, reservoir is off. Next thing I need to do is crack this and take this off. So uh, I'm trying to make sure I, you know, protect the area here, cover up as much as I can because this stuff is very uh, caustic. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and break that line. I've already had it off before because I was worried in the past that this was the problem. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and remove that. Okay, we'll go ahead and cover that up. Okay, so here's one point of failure. There's basically two new points of failure I'm introducing here. Um, one, I don't have the replacement banjo bolt washers on hand. So these crush washers that go on either, either side. I've been reading that those are fairly reusable. Um, so I'm going to reuse those. But that's a point of possible failure. The other is I, I just haven't been able to find 
that that hose that go hose that's tolerant that I'm sure can be tolerant of the brake fluid that goes between the reservoir and the master. Um, Obviously, that's a possible point of failure, but I, I think it'll be okay. I've been looking at the hose; it's pretty fresh. I think it's been replaced before, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. Um, but you know, obviously, it's a possible point of failure. So, I ordered these uh, Craftsman Allen keys a couple months ago because I wanted to get like a matching set. These things are just awful. They got this coating that's like really grainy. It just they're really unpleasant when they clink together they kind of do that nails in a chalkboard feeling i really hate them i want to replace them so if anyone knows a good replacement uh allen keys they like i've seen some stuff made in europe that look really really good um i just i just don't like these Okay, that's off. I gotta remove these electrical terminals for the brake kit, which is another piece I'm a little worried about. I'm wondering if this will be something I can uh, easily replace because I don't know if I have the switch for the new brake type. We'll see. I've repaired these terminals before. It's just a simple click switch, so I could probably rig something up one way or another. Um, it's actually kind of funny. It's uh, there's juice all over the place. Did I drip? No, I'm good. It's kind of weird. It's actually a it's it's it clicks when it's in and it unclicks when you squeeze it. So it's like clicking the button turn kicking the button is like flipping the switch off to turn the light on. It's the best way I could describe it. So hey, so I got the new one. That's where the switch is going to go. Let's see if I can get it to line up here. Well, we've hit a snag, and I don't remember how to fix this problem. At some point, I came across this brake light switch, um, and it fits there, but the little nipple there is broken. I'm going to go find a new switch, or I'm going to have to go find one online. But I'm going to go ahead and get this all working today. And at least get the the bike stopping and starting. I don't have to go for a ride, but I want to make sure that this is all secure. Okay, so one thing I did want to bring up, um, a lot of people, a lot of forms will, will tell you that it is an upgrade to go from the Brembo brakes that came stock with the original 916s and 748s to go up to these Brembos, a lot of forms. And, and then a, a follow-up question would be like, oh, why aren't you getting a radial brake uh, kit? You know, like you could get radial brakes and all that stuff. Oh, the fuel is much better on this, that, and the other thing. Um, there's a very simple answer why I went with... I, I, I th oh, Let me back up. I think this is actually not native to the bike, because if you look at the bike's controls, you look at the clutch master cylinder, it's still a Brembo, and I don't think that they would have come with one or the other. I don't know, but I don't think this is actually origi OEM original. I think this is actually what the bike came with OEM. Am I returning the bike to stock? Because for collector status you guys know better if you've watched any of my stuff before you know that's absolutely not the case i am not opposed to upgrading the bars that are on the bike are not original um the reason that i have uh i'm going with the brembo and not the nissan is because the brembos were cheaper <laughs> and it was easily readily available <laughs> Um, I understand that the feel is probably better with these. I don't know. Maybe there's a debate out there and maybe I'm completely backwards, but I, what I've read, as I recall, the brake, the feel is better. I mean, one thing I like, this has kind of a nicer adjuster. This, you have to like manually screw you, 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 this, you can on the fly, adjust that when you can't, no matter that was cheaper. This is what I have to go for. Um, 
you know, there's a slightly better feel and that bad. I, I'm not a, I'm not that fast of a rider. Um, I'm no slouch, but <laughs> I don't need perfection. I'm not Mark Marquez. I'm sure Mark Marquez would be able to feel the real difference between the two. As long as that's going to be bled properly, I'll be able to feel it just fine. You know, like we're talking about fraction, uh, fractions of a second of performance difference between the two and I'm whole seconds away. So there's no difference between it for me. So I'm just going to go with standard Brembo. They're not, it's not garbage. It's fine enough. So, okay. Back at it with day two. And, uh, here we go again. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is get this banjo bolt installed. It's not sliding in quite as easy as I'd like. Really? <laughs> uh. Okay, so to get to this point, or this is, uh, you know, I'm converting bolt sizes here. And I got this in, and it was, it just wasn't going in super easy, you know, and I don't want to cross thread anything. And, uh, move that out of the way so I started testing it and I mean I know you guys can't feel this but as soon as I get it in right there it goes right in and it stops I'm like what the hell man so then I pulled it out took a look in there look how shallow that is so I need a new banjo bolt uh, I mean, I'm just going to double check. I'm not crazy here, but the old one was way deeper. Oh, it's not coming out. Might have to stop and try to figure out how to get a new banjo bolt. Okay, actually, we are good. Um, we've already gone through this once a couple, uh, couple months ago when I tried to install it. Um, I actually went to a shop. Remember, I got the replacement... Um, washers here, crush washers, and I also got a banjo bolt that would fit. So we're actually already, we already gone down this road. I kind of was looking back at my notes, and uh, we're fine. We, we got it. I have had another one sitting in there I forgot I had. One of those things, you know, when you don't do the work for a couple weeks, that's a different size, though. Um, you know, you have to, uh, adjust a little bit you, you tend to forget um, what am I saying here you tend to forget what what it is you some of the problems you've already dealt with you know <clears throat> okay so it said uh, 12 newton meters which I got this thing that's in inch pounds Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the new reservoir on. Alright, we're going to have to figure out how this is going to all sit together here in a moment. This is the cl the uh, holder I have, but I want to mount it up once I know where all the fairing is going to go and everything. Um, on the other one, I was getting a lot of bumping of the um, the reservoir. It was actually scratching on the fairing. I don't know if it's going to pop up there, but you can kind of see the, the lid was getting like rubbed on. Oh, shit. The lid was kind of getting rubbed on. So we'll pay attention to that. I, I don't know if you saw before. It was just kind of, it wasn't actually mounted. It was just hanging out there. Um, weird. I, I think we're actually at a good point here. We can actually start put a new brake juice in there well while I'm here I have ordered fresh nipples um, you know old moldy nipples are never good you always want the freshest youngest nipples you can get um, so anyway I got some fresh ones titanium bits that took weeks to get here but they're here and we'll put those on so that it's fresh I mean you can see they're starting to get they were rounded before I ever 
went after them. So, I mean, the system's gonna have to be, be completely repumped anyway, so this is a good time as ever. Okay, that went surprisingly smooth. Suspiciously smooth, but um, actually I don't think, think that's a good sign that this thing is a lot healthier than the old one was, because, I mean, it was like, it only took like, one filling of the cap and then the whole system was like was giving me resistance for the other one I'd have to pump and pump and pump fill and pump and pump and pump and get to get air out um, so I, I that's good and it's, it's pretty stiff now um, there's probably a little bit of slop I can uh, pull out of it and what I'm gonna do is that's gonna be off camera there's some tricks um, I can I mean obviously the whole bleed was off camera already but um, I can uh, one of the things you can do is just kind of hold the, the lever down for a couple hours and then crack all the, the bleed points and get the last couple of bubbles out that way so the brakes are nice and stiff. You can also um, crack it out of the ban banjo boat bolt and bleed from there as well just to get that really crisp feeling. There's not too much slop. I mean, the brakes are starting to engage right, right about there and they don't get really stiff to back here. So there's a little bit of nuance. Again, I'm, I'm not racing. I just need to squeeze and make the machine slow down. The real test will be in like three days if it holds its, holds its pressure because that was the real problem. The other one I was able to get to a point actually crisper than, than that handle feels. Um, but three days later, it was completely soft, like pulled to the bar soft. So, um, I think we've got success there. That's good news. What's next? Next, we've got to put the, um, the fairing back on and um, put the new windscreen on because I actually did end up getting a new windscreen. And then we're back on the road again. Well, good news. First time the bike's been fully assembled in a couple months. Uh, it's good to kind of get out of a de depression funk and get to work. Last thing I got is uh, this. I haven't even opened it yet. It's been sitting here for weeks. And uh, it's a replacement fairing, so I'll pop it open real quick. Screen. It's clear. I always go with the uh, totally queer windscreens. I don't know a lot of people like the smoke, but uh, I'll tell you one thing I absolutely disagree with is the, um, the ones that have any kind of tinting to make this red. It just ruins your view, you know? Um, just lowers your chances of seeing obstacles in the road, so I'm not a big fan of them. Go ahead and put this on. Yeah, it's the same thing that was on there before. It's looking pretty good. You can see that crack, but not too bad. I mean, if I zoom in, there it is. But, yeah, she's got a battle scar. She looks good. Someday we'll bondo and filler it and move on, but, uh, and probably get the whole bike repainted. But till then, she looks great. Okay, well, uh, everything's back together and the bike's uh, rideable again, and so that, that's good. We can move on with life, and uh, hopefully I'll go for some rides here in the next few days. Um, saving, like, all the personal woe is me for the end. Uh, I know the last thing I put out was, was a little depressing, and, uh, you know, stuff, stuff hasn't gotten much better. Uh, but there's forward progress, you know. Being unemployed is just about the worst, man. Uh, it's it's just weirdly like like you're in the abyss, you know. Um, so you know it's been rough. Good news is I've got some I've had some interviews. 
um, and I have had uh, I have some good feedback and actually any day now maybe even before this video gets published I'm gonna have a, a job offer I have a good feeling about two places I just interviewed with I've had oh, four interviews now five interviews and a bunch of initial tests and um, looking uh, looking at kind of a switch in career fields maybe a lot of stuff I've been looking at has been like uh, like emergency uh, services kind of stuff and um, those those agencies take forever to hire and they, they take forever to hire when it's when there's no pandemic slowing everything down um, so right now it's you know it's just slow going and then a lot of those agencies do this thing they'll post a job you apply for it. They say, "Okay, take this test," and they go, "Well, you're on your you're on our qualified list." And it's like, well, "Okay, great." And it's you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't disqualify. You might be their number one candidate. But they actually weren't hiring. They were like putting a list together for when they may hire someday. It's it's a total pain in the ass. <laughs> um, so I got some. So anyway, uh, yeah, I've I've gone through a bunch of testing. Um, I went on a, a drive last week. I drove all the way up from, I live near Los Angeles. I drove all the way up to Spokane, Washington for a test and then an interview. Um, I had never been to Oregon, Washington or Idaho. So along the way, I just I dipped in to Des Moines and then I drove all the way up to Spokane. So I got to uh, uh, see some new terrain. And then from Spokane, drove all the way across to Seattle. Um, again, all new terrain for me, and then south went through Portland, uh, and then drove straight through uh, California. The furthest north I'd ever been before that was, um, like, I'd gone over Donner Pass in Reno, Sacramento. That was kind of like a hard line of the furthest north, um, this side of the states I've ever been. So that was, that was really neat, um, getting to go on that drive, and then, yeah, and then that's actually one of, one of my possible jobs. Um, so I might not be living in California soon too, which is, um, which will be really sweet. Um, th some of the best roads are out here, uh, and the re best riding weather is out here, but, uh, boy, I don't want to live near Los Angeles anymore for, for, I don't know if anyone's ever, ever visited and it's, um, it's funny when... <clears throat> I, th I think about like what my objections are when you watch like older movies not not super old but I mean anything from like the 90s back they, I guess the joke still stands today but it's a common joke I mean stand-up comedians do it where they talk about oh my friends in Los Angeles they're so crazy they get out to LA and that's that's Hollywood showbiz garbage that's talking about like <clears throat> like a freaking two square mile chunk of like you know, I don't know, 10,000 people. There's like 20 million people who live in the Los Angeles area and like 10,000 of them work around Hollywood, you know? So when some comedian's like, oh, let me tell you, oh, they all start drinking kale and stuff, you know, and this, oh, and, and they get liposuction and, or uh, not, Botox and all those kind of jokes, it's, it's like completely irrelevant to the, what the actual problems are for, you know, the rest of the 20 million people who live out here. The problems, uh, though, to tell you someone who does get it, a lot of it is, is Joe Rogan. If you listen to his podcast, he made a big deal about he was leaving Los Angeles and moving to Austin, Texas. Texas is also on my list. Um, and uh, he, 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 get a, he got a lot of the things right. Some of the things I think he overplayed, but, you know, for me, it's, it's the population, the, um, I mean, one of the big things is you can't, Get to wilderness um like i, I live at the, what's foothill area right so just south of the, of the angeles mountains and i mean it, it's five minutes and i'm in a what's considered a national national uh national forest excuse me and okay that that's your thing we're thinking okay yeah that's great right but you can't not see people like I'm not saying like you you know like oh you see people out no 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 I mean like you can't not see people like you go up there and everywhere you look is people 
um, it's crazy making. You can't get away from other humans. Um, we went for a drive a couple weeks ago. Mike, it, it snowed. It rained down here. It snowed up in the mountains. And so I said to my wife, let's go up to uh, Big Bear. Be cool. We'll have the kids play in the snow. So, okay. And so we get up, and it's like an hour drive to get to, to the base of Big Bear. Not quite an hour, 45 minutes. And then, like, literally as soon as we get to the mountain, there's a line of cars to get up the mountain. And then we sat in line for an hour and a half, hour 45, almost two hours of just inching up the mountain with 10,000 other people. This is wilderness area. If you, if you, I know a lot of people aren't familiar with Big Bear, but this is wilderness area. And there were 10,000 cars. So on my trip to Spokane a couple weeks ago, uh, last week, the, the snow was still up there. Driving up, I was driving up to 15. There's a gas station where I know I can get um, good service. You know, it's a good gas station. And I see that there's the, the traffic slows down on the freeway. The whole freeway start, is jammed. And then I'm like, man, well, what's going on? And I'm starting to think. Then I start noticing that all of the traffic's to the right and the traffic to the left is starting to accelerate. And I'm thinking, man, I need to get to that gas station. Well, it turns out that that gas station, that's another road that takes you. Basically, you go to this, this exit. It's a uh, Highway 138. I used, to, I used to drive it daily. If you go to the right, it takes you up to Big Bear. And if you go to the left, it takes you to Wrightwood, which are the two snow places. And the, the traffic was backed out two miles on the freeway. Look it up on a map. In fact, I'll, uh, I'm going to post a map, right, to show you. That, so this is traffic back to, uh, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll flash it on the screen. I'm going to Google Maps it, put it on the screen, you'll see. It was ridiculous. It was out to the freeway. There were cars lined up on the freeway to get off the freeway to get in line to either go to Wrightwood or Arrowhead. And mind you, the lines were up both sides of the hill. So there were 10,000 cars going that way. I don't know if it's 10,000, but 10,000 cars going that way and 10,000 cars going that way. You can't get to wilderness. It's, it's just, it's insane. Um, and, you know, I'm not like a hobbit, a, a hermit, whatever. But uh, I do like to be able to be, you know, kind of by myself and in the woods where it's quiet. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that, that to me, that's like the root core of the problem um, in terms of environment. Los Angeles area would be paradise. There was no people. It's beautiful. There's a lot of people here because of that. But um, on the flips, and the, the, the other major issue, and this is the one probably the most point pushing me out, it's the cost of housing. I mean, I'm really blessed that this house, um, I'm getting a sweetheart deal because my parents own it. Parents used to live here earlier in the channel if you've been following me for that long. Um, sometimes my dad would pop out or whatever. But uh, uh, my parents moved up the road. Um, but now uh, uh, I want to get my own house someday. And I'm not going to make fistfuls of dollars. So all I can hope to do it, here, I was, well, so just to put it in perspective here, the only way I could even begin to dream about a house, I had the job where I was deploying all the time. I don't have that anymore. So like, you know, a normal, I'm hoping to make like 60 or 70,000 a year ish, right? That's not unreasonable. That's a decent living. That's, that's kind of tight when you have four kids, but that's a okay living. No chance. Uh, like a house like this, so the, I don't, house is like 2,000 square foot, four bed. It's actually three bed with an office that can be a bed. A house like this would go for three quarters of a million dollars, right? And we don't live in downtown LA. If you go into like actual LA proper, you can find houses that are like 1,100 square foot, two bedroom, and they go for a full million dollars. One million dollars for two bedroom, 1,100 square foot home. You think I'm crazy, look it up on Zillow, they're out there. And this isn't Zillow numbers being wonky. I know realtors. Those are legit numbers. And in fact, a lot of times they're undersold because houses go for more. The housing is insane out here, right? Where we're looking in Texas, $250,000 gets you a house. 
you know, I, I have friends who live in, um, for example, in, in Chino, which is east of here. It's Los Angeles area. It's technically uh, Riverside County, I think, where they live. Uh, I don't know what side Chino is. They live east of Chino now. Um, they have a house. It's a, I think it's a three bed, 2,000 square foot-ish, plus or minus a few. Um, it's a decent house. It's two story, right? So it's 2,000 feet, but two story. So it's not, it's not 2,000 square foot. It's 2,000 square foot, right? Um, they were pay, paying almost 4,000 a month for rent. $4,000 a month, right? How do you even survive off that? <laughs> how do you make the, how the hell do you make that work? I, I don't know, man. Um, so, you know, Spokane's way cheaper. Um, what, you know, Seattle's pretty brutal too, but places like Spokane, it's, you know, quarter million dollars, you got a house. Areas in Texas I'm looking at, quarter million dollars looking at a house. Um, it'd be hard to leave family and friends, but good grief. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, I can, I can, I can make it work out there and we've got Zoom and Skype and there's airplanes for grandparents to visit. I mean, I hate to not have my kids see their grandparents as often as they do now, but no, who can afford to live out here? So anyway, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm trying to, I'm hoping for a job. I mean, on, one of the jobs actually said they could post as early to not, as tonight. Um, wish me luck. Maybe I'll get off this, uh, this vlog and, um, uh, go back and oh I got an offer right um, I guess that means for the channel rambling but I mean um, obviously changes are afoot uh, for the next kind of we're looking at like probably for six months we're gonna have a pretty small place I don't know I don't I don't know what's what's gonna be out there what's gonna be down here um, the plan is not to sell the bike for now, so I'll have a bike. Um, and if, it, if finances do hit to where I need to sell the bike, I'll get another bike someday. Stick around. <laughs> I'll have other stuff on here eventually. I enjoy this. Anyway, but for the next few months, you know, I'll probably be pretty tight. I do want to get some riding videos in. I got some new camera stuff, and I've ne I have yet to do a riding video. Um, I think that would be fun. So maybe here in the next few days, I'll try to work something out where I can do a, a legit moto vlog right because you know most moto vloggers are like they have one videos shop and the other 10 they're on their bike but um, I'm gonna try to set something up soon I got I got some other toys that I that are secret that I, I do want to use to show off but um, anyway for now um, as always I, I appreciate everyone who watches I appreciate the feedback that I get everyone I I appreciate the reaching out. A bunch, bunch of people did um, reached out when my last video looked like, you know, I guess it looked pretty down. And um, it's kind of cool to see that actually people are paying attention. Um, but anyway, until the next one, I again, as always, I appreciate everyone watching and uh, hope to talk to you all soon. Bye.